delicious. Hello everyone and welcome to another video here on Bilbo Breaker Knight's channel. Today, I really wanted to show off my new movie cabinet because I'm really excited about it. I um, got this on Amazon for $30. And, you know, it's not perfect. The back is one of those nail-on back things and, you know, they kind of like sag forward or backward or whatever. But other than that, it's a good cabinet for sure. It definitely gets the job done. And eventually when I do want to get another one, it'll be cheap to, to do so. And it goes well with my TV stand. It's basically the same color. This one's a little darker, but, you know, if I hadn't pointed that out, no one would notice it. I don't plan to point that out to people who come over. I just don't. So anyway, I just kind of want to show off some of these collectibles that I just really hadn't had an opportunity to talk about in other videos. And also, I can't rem I can't really remember which movies I've talked about and which I haven't, so I'm just going to do like a, a quick run-through of all of the Blu-rays I have. Not the DVDs, because those are just boring. Uh, but just a quick little run-through, basically just a title read-off and stuff, and then later on I might come back and revisit some of the ones that I want to talk about a little more in-depth. So first off, I have my Smaug action figure. I did do a review of that a while back, and it's actually quite popular. It's one of my most popular videos. Uh, I thought it was very well done. It's not perfect, you know. It's not some major, uh, highly expertly crafted work of art or anything, but it's definitely very nice, and it's probably one of the cooler action figure, movie collectible type things I have. And it also came with Bard the Bowman and his wind lance, which you can probably see there in front. Uh, next off is my Indiana Jones hat, which I do wear in my series, the BB-09 Files, a lot. But I can just take it off there when I do need it for the show. Next I had an idea, and I thought it was kind of cool. I'm doing a Bilbo's Movie of the Week. It's on a, a nice little pedestal there. So each Friday I'm putting out a new movie to recommend to whoever comes by and cares about my recommendations, which Probably won't be a whole lot of people, but, you know, it's just an idea I had. This week, of course, it is the Born Collection. I don't have all the movies separately, I just have uh, a co the collection, as you can see, and the Born Supremacy in a different container, but, you know, that one wasn't the best. I'm sorry, no, not Born Supremacy, Born, Born Legacy. I get those two mixed up, I don't know why. Born Supremacy was awesome, that might actually be my favorite. Born Legacy, not so much. Anyway, I probably would just have the Bourne Ultimatum up there because, you know, Jason Bourne's coming out. Really excited to see that. Cannot wait. Uh, so, yeah, every Friday I'll be having a new movie up there, which I think is a cool idea. Next to it, I have, like, a little fake Oscar. I took a film class with my grandfather a while back. Uh, he's really into movies, kind of like I am, except he likes a lot of the older movies. I, I do, too. Uh, I actually think I like older movies better than he likes newer movies. So I think I'm a little more fair-minded like that. But that's just me. Anyway, so it's kind of like a little fake Oscar. It just says movie buff on the bottom. And next to it, I wish I could say it was vintage, but I don't believe it is. But it's a Star Wars lunchbox. And it looks like something you would have had in the 80s. Some little kid from the 80s who loved Star Wars and took his lunchbox to school. So, you know, kind of makes me feel a little nostalgic, even though I wasn't around back then. Down here I have a little Yoda bobblehead bookend, or in this case, Blu-ray end. And at the very bottom I have a few more, which I'll go ahead and get out so you can see them better. First up, just a couple action figures I have. Bilbo here, Thorin here, both from the Hobbits, of course. Uh, and next I have a few Star Wars ones. Whoops, he just lost his lightsaber. Darth Vader, because he's awesome. And he does have a lightsaber, but, you know, he kind of fell over and fell out of his hand. And then, just because they're some of the nicer ones I have, R2-D2 and C-3PO. I don't really have any really nice ones of, like, Luke and Han and Leia, so I just went with those. Uh, next, I have something from Jurassic Park, which I really love. It's a Tyrannosaurus Rex action figure. More like a statue, really, from Papo. They, they make really nice dinosaur statues. I highly recommend them. This is the only one I have, but I would like to get some more at some point. Uh... The ones that were in the Jurassic Park film series, T-Rex, Velociraptor, Spinosaurus in particular, they made them look like the ones from the movies, and this one in particular looks amazing, I think. You're, you are going to pay much more for them than you would for regular action figures, but they are museum quality, and they are spectacularly designed, I think. Spectacularly. Uh, down here, 
have another book end, Thorn's Key from Erebor, except it's much bigger than it is in the movie. I mean, he could have killed someone with this if he had it this big. And I did have it up there where Yoda is now, but then I bought a few more, and there wasn't enough space for it. Next, I have something else I have done a review for in the past, a Two Towers film cell. With a picture again of the way here, but the actual film cell, I don't know if you can see that or not, is Frodo and Sam and... Not M and Mule. Although, it might be. Yeah, I think that might be Emma Mule. Either that, or when they're talking next to the river and Gollum's fishing and they have the big argument, I can't really tell. Then the last one I have is another film cell from Jaws. This is a replicant. I believe that one might be authentic. This one I know is a replica, and that one I'm not sure. Uh, but it's, this one's still really cool. I mean, Jaws is such a famous classic movie. It'd be really hard and very expensive to get your hands on an original film cell, I'm sure. But, to give you an idea of how long I've had this, it's a Blockbuster exclusive uh, merchandise item. So yeah, I've had this for a while now. So as I said before, I'm just going to do a quick run through some of my movies in case any of you are interested. It's not, it's not a bragging thing, I swear. I don't have some sort of complex where I have to brag about everything I have. It's really just because I like talking about movies I love. So, you know, that's what it is. Watch it if you want. Skip it if you want. It is entirely up to you. All alphabetized, of course. I've spent a long time alphabetizing them, let me tell you what. And I, I still see mistakes every once in a while. Like, what is Lord of the Rings doing behind the Revenant? How'd it get there? I didn't do that. Gosh, I'm not that stupid. Apparently someone was. If you're watching, I'm sorry. I didn't mean to offend you. But you shouldn't have done that. And I do apologize if it sounds like I'm mumbling or whatever, but I am having some allergies right now. I, you don't think of having the allergies in the summertime, but I am. So, and it, oh gosh, you're not full. Anyway, let's begin. Seventh Voyage of Sinbad, the one and only Ray Harryhausen movie I have on Blu-ray. I plan to get more eventually because Ray Harryhausen was a genius. Rest in peace. Ten Cloverfield Lane, one of my favorite movies ever. Definitely my favorite movie of the year 2016 so far. 2001 A Space Odyssey. Very heady movie, but visually spectacular, especially for the 60s. 2010, the remake Contact, the sequel, which came out quite a while later. Like 10 or 20 years, I think. Have not seen it yet, but some people like it better than the first one. A very small minority. The Alien Anthology, all four films. It's only the first two that are any good. Alien and Aliens are both amazing. Alien 3, Alien Resurrection, not so much. But it's worth having it, not only for the awesome box, but also because there are hours of bonus features on here. American Sniper Steelbook. Good to know those uh, all-American stories. And then there were none. A miniseries. Wanted to see it, and I did not catch it while it was on TV, so I kind of had to buy it in order to see it. Quite good. Not quite, maybe not quite as good as I was hoping for, but still, still quite good. Definitely recommend it. Uh, Sam Neill and Aiden Turner are both in it. Really like both of them. Apollo 13, Ron Howard film. The Back to the Future trilogy. Gotta have it. Especially the first one. I've not seen the third one yet. Second one's okay. The first one is a classic. A Beautiful Mind, which came in a tattered case, so I had to replace it and put the pamphlet in another spare Blu-ray case that I had. Very annoying, and I, and I ordered it brand new. Double feature, two wonderful classic movies, Ben-Hur especially, and The Ten Commandments as well. Definitely more dated, but still very good. The Bible miniseries, okay. Not, not spectacular, but it's okay. Definitely better Jesus movies out there, or series. Blade Runner. What a contrast. And The Bourne Collection. Another contrast. But, pumped for Jason Bourne. I really hope it has good reviews and is a good movie. Because I'm going to be very disappointed if not. It's probably my second most anticipated movie for the entire year. After Star Wars Rogue One. Bravehearts. Awesome, awesome movie. Captain Phillips. Another awesome movie. Tom Hanks, one of my favorite Tom Hanks films. And another one of my favorite Tom Hanks films, Castaway. We love that movie. 
Close Encounters of the Third Kind on the AFI's Top 100 Movies Ever Made, I believe. Steven Spielberg. Cloverfield. Not as good as 10 Cloverfield Lane by a long shot, but still a pretty decent monster movie. If you can deal with the found footage, I know it makes some people nauseous. The Conjuring. Here is a very good horror film. I have not seen it yet. I don't want to watch it alone. I know that. Contagion. Realistic take on what would happen if Ebola really did become something huge, like we thought it was going to for a while. It's not some campy thing like that. It's more of a scientific, documentary-style look on it. But it has an amazing cast. Uh, Matt Damon, Lawrence Fishburne, Jude Law, Gwyneth Paltrow, Kate Winslet, and Marion... Something. Cotillard. Cotty, Cotty, Cotillard. I don't know. I know I butchered it. I'm sorry. Dances with Wolves. Kevin Costner. Also on the best movies list, I know, for at least IMDb, but I believe on the AFI as well. American Film Institute. The Dark Knight Trilogy. Very good series. Not my favorite trilogy or series of all time. Like some people think it is, but still very good. Defiance. Underrated World War II film with Daniel Craig. I really like Daniel Craig, uh, especially because of, you know, James Bond movies. Um, but this, I think this is an underrated movie. I like it a lot. Check it out. Downton Abbey Season 6. Not mine. Don't know why we only have Season 6 on Blu-ray, because all the other seasons we have on DVD. Don't want to ask me. E.T. The Extraterrestrial. Classic Spielberg. Gattaca. Sci-fi film. I had to spend a coupon on uh, Amazon Prime now, and I bought one movie, and I had to spend more money, so I was like, well, I'm going to check it out. It has good reviews. Sci-fi movie. Uh, Ethan Hawke, Uma Thurman, Jude Law. So, I'm going to check it out. Gettysburg, director's cut. Very good Civil War film. Gladiator. Wonderful film with Russell Crowe. The Godfather Trilogy, Coppola Restoration. Leave the gun, take the cannoli. Gods and Generals, extended director's cut. Standing at 8% on Rotten Tomatoes. I don't understand that because I think it's very, very good. It's a prequel to Gettysburg. Uh, Jeff Daniels, Stephen Lang especially, and Robert Duvall all do a great job. I, I think it's just because I only saw the director's cut. And... With the director's cut, it works better as a miniseries because it's broken down into four or five parts uh, that, are, that are each an hour or so long. So I definitely recommend not watching it all in one night because that would be a very long night. But it's very good. Definitely recommend giving it a chance at least. Stephen Lang did an amazing job as Stonewall Jackson. Goodfellas. Another, another gangsta movie. Goodwill Hunting on sale for $5.99 at Best Buy. And it's not a bad movie. It's a great movie. The Green Mile, Forrest Gump, Double Feature. Both great movies, especially The Green Mile, though. I love The Green Mile. One of my favorite movies of all time. One of my few A-plus films. Hobbit, An Unexpected Journey, Extended Edition. The Hobbit, The Desolation of Snog, Extended Edition. And, of course, The Hunt for Note, The Hobbit, The Battle of the Five Armies, Extended Edition. Such a good series, very underrated. I still believe that if they had come out before Lord of the Rings, people would love them. That's just me, though. Done for October. Sean Connery, Alec Baldwin, not a huge fan. Uh, Sam Neill. And the guy from It, who plays the creepy clown. Imagine Dragons, Smoke and Mirrors Live. Something a little different. It doesn't really fit with the rest of my Blu-rays, since it looks like a CD. Uh, but it does contain a Blu-ray version of their concert, as well as a CD containing parts of their concert on audio. Don't know why they don't have the whole thing, but they don't. The Imitation Game. Uh, by the way, speaking of Benedict Cumberbatch, the, uh, there's a new teaser out for season four of Sherlock. Looks very good. In the Heart of the Sea, very underrated Ron Howard film. No one seemed to like it. I loved it. I think they just were expecting more action or something, and they didn't get it. But it was a realistic take on at least what is believed to be a true story. I thought it was very well done. Inception. Great film. It's kind of a rip-off of The Matrix, but different enough to still be very, very good. Independence Day. 
Indiana Jones, The Complete Adventures, including Kingdom of the Crystal Skull. But, you know, it comes in a nice box. The James Bond Collection. All 23 films. I had to buy uh, Spectre separately. I got this as a gift for my dad on Father's Day. We've been enjoying watching all these great movies together. Especially Casino Royale. Such a good movie. Jaws. Classic. Gotta have it. So, so good. Jesus of Nazareth. Probably the best movie or series ever made about Jesus. If you want to know about Jesus, watch that. It's a mini-series. And for some reason, the Blu-ray cuts out part of The Last Supper and something else. Don't know why, but they did. Jurassic Park, the not-so-ultimate trilogy anymore, because now you have to have Jurassic World. King Kong, the Peter Jackson version. I want to get the original version as well. Uh, but this, this is a very good film as well. And also, there's a new King Kong movie coming out in March. Kong Skull Island, I believe it is. Where King Kong looks absolutely huge, based on the trailer from uh, San Diego Comic Con. Hoping it's going to be good. Don't want to get my hopes up too high, though. Uh, Samuel L. Jackson and John Goodman are going to be in it, though. So, Hoping it's going to be good. Kingdom of Heaven, director's cut. Have not seen the original cut, which I hear is not very good, but the director's cut is a decent film by Ridley Scott, and he did Gladiator as well. Last of the Mohicans, director's definitive cut, which I hear adds like two or three minutes into it. The Last Samurai. Life is Beautiful, probably the best foreign film ever made. You have to watch it entirely with uh, Italian and it's in Italian and they have subtitles, but it is a very, very good movie about the Holocaust. Highly recommend it. Lincoln. And if I can only keep one of these Blu-rays, you say? Totally this one, Lord of the Rings Extended Edition Trilogy. Includes my favorite film of all time, The Fellowship of the Ring. And my third favorite film, The Return of the King. Jurassic Park squeezed in between there. The Martian. I found out there's an extended edition of this like a week ago, which I may get eventually, but I hear it's not really necessary. But I really like this film, so I'll probably get it eventually. Master and Commander, The Far Side of the World. If, on, if one of these series could continue, I wish it was this one, because I only got one movie for it, and they were planning on making it into a series, and it did do very well, and it got great uh, critical acclaim. It's just that it didn't get quite enough box office money in order to make a sequel. I would love a sequel though because it was such an amazing movie. I actually like it better than Gladiator. It's Russell Crowe. The Matrix. Gotta have it. Just gotta. Midnight Special. Interesting sci-fi film. Not quite as good as I was hoping for. Um, but it's still a very interesting movie. Don't go into this expecting a ton of explosions and aliens and action. There is some of that. Just not a lot. It focuses more on the characters. The guy who made this movie says that emotion matters more than plots. Not sure I entirely agree with that, but kind of. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I've not seen this yet. Don't kill me. Lots of people have been telling me to watch this, so I used my Prime Now coupon to buy it. Because there wasn't much else on there that I didn't already have or was interested in. Great movies, just not a whole lot I was interested in, like Avatar and... Ant-Man stuff. Good movies I hear, just not quite my thing. At least not yet. North by Northwest. One of my few classic films for right now. Definitely want to get some more in the future. Most notably Casablanca. The Patriot. Despite, uh, extended cut. Despite its historical inaccuracies, still very, very good film. Patton, Steelbook. Probably one of the best biographies of one person ever made. The Prestige. Great film by Christopher Nolan. Not his best, but one of his best. I mean, he hasn't made that many, to be fair. But most of what he's made is good, except Interstellar, which I didn't like. I know a lot of people loved it. I didn't, but that's just me. Not mine, Pride and Prejudice. No, I swear, I swear it's not mine. Prometheus. Wonderful visually, 
Not so great on story, very confusing. The only reason I got it is because it was $4 on sale at Best Buy, which is an amazing deal for any Blu-ray. Uh, even a horrible movie, which this isn't horrible. It's different, but visually, visually stunning. Probably some of the best visuals for a movie I've ever seen. Except for the old guy. They did a horrible job on the old guy. He just looked like... He looked terrible, but everything else was great. Visually. Pulp Fiction. I want to get a really hell of cheese. I'm hungry. The Revenant. Wonderful film. Absolutely stunning. With Leonardo DiCaprio. Love that movie. Rise of the Planet of the Apes. Once again, $4 at Best Buy. Do not have Dawn yet. But, you know, they're fun. Saving Private Ryan. One of the best war films ever made. Seven, dark and disturbing, but so, so good. The Shawshank Redemption. Shutter Island. Have not seen it yet. Looking forward to it. Leonardo DiCaprio and Martin Scorsese. Son of God. Once again, not the best Jesus movie or series, but, you know, decent. Definitely like Jesus and Nazareth better. Stand By Me. Uh, Stephen King. He's an interesting guy, because his horror stuff is okay. I love it. That's, it's so funny and scary at the same time. So I like some of the scarier, scarier stuff. The Mist, as well, is pretty good. A silver Bullet. But I like it when he writes more serious stuff like this. It doesn't really focus on supernatural elements so much. This, The Green Mile, that does have supernatural elements. But it's not the for, at the forefront of the story like most of his horror stuff is. But, you know, Stand By Me, Shawshank Redemption, and Green Mile, I like that stuff better most of the time than just horror movies. This is a great film. Star Trek, the J.J. Abrams reboot. I do want to get the classic ones eventually, but they're more expensive. And Star Trek in the Darkness. I have not seen this one yet, but I'm going to watch it before I go see Star Trek Beyond, which I'm very much looking forward to. Star Wars, the now incomplete saga. Wonderful box. I don't think you can get it in this packaging anymore, but not sure about that. And to make it complete, Star Wars The Force Awakens. Not my favorite, but still good. Super 8. Very underrated film uh, from J.J. Abrams and Steven Spielberg. Great. Great combination there. Love both of them. Superman the movie, the original. Much better than Man of Steel. Taken. Liam Neeson. I will find you. Titanic, Stupid Glare, To Kill a Mockingbird, another one of my few classic films, want to get more of them eventually though, <laughs> Tremors Attack Pack, fun, fun movies, I love them so much, especially the, the first one, mostly, they kind of get progressively dumber, but the second one's okay too, U571, Unbroken. Once again, I think it's kind of an underrated war film. It's not amazing. It's like B+, but I think they were a little too harsh on this one. The Untouchables. Another gangster movie. Love those gangster films. Westworld. Have not seen this one yet either. Uh, hence by Michael Crichton, though. So it should be good. I love Michael Crichton. The X-Files Season 1, Season 2, and Season 3 as of now. It's an ongoing collection. And finally, Yosemite, The High Sierras. Don't even know where this one came from, to be honest, but I haven't seen it yet. I'm sure it's going to look great on Blu-ray, though. And that is my collection as of now. I am accepting donation, though, no, I'm kidding. I will definitely be adding to it some more, though, because this is my favorite new thing to collect. It's so fun collecting movies and watching them and saying, oh, when people come over, you gotta see this one. You gotta see this one. They're so good. You've never seen this one? What? What? Are you living under a rock? And to be honest, I've been spending far too much time sitting in this chair, staring at my collection, making sure it's in alphabetical order, and pulling out movies saying, oh, I need to watch this one. Oh, that one was so good. I have far too much time on my hands, as you can tell. And that is it. So, what movies do I absolutely have to have in my collection? I'd love to hear from you. Doesn't necessarily mean I'm gonna buy it. 
But I'd like to hear what you have to say. I know there's some that have to get, you know, like Casablanca and Citizen Kane. Citizen Kane is so expensive, though. I don't know why it's so expensive. And you have to get, like, this Ultimate Collector's Edition. There's, like, no simple version of it. And it's a good movie. But I don't love it like some people. Anyway guys, that is it for today. I hope you did enjoy the video. If you did, please hit that like button. I love talking about movies, so if you like this video, you know, I'll make much more movie things, because I love talking about movies. It's so fun. And that is about it for today. Uh, in the near future, look for some reviews about some movies and series that I've been watching. One in particular that I just have to talk about. Just have to. Um, so stay tuned for that. The BB-09 Files, Season 1 finale, is coming very, very soon. August 3rd, I believe. Very excited about that. I think it's our best one yet. It's, it's pretty good. So stay tuned for that. More Minecraft videos, Lego videos, all that good stuff. Until then, goodbye.